this is uh, Rod Evans and this is mini lecture 3 general strategies for tackling Miller analogies this is the four step method step 1 determine whether the relationship is 1 2 3 4 or 1 3 2 4 step 2 Create a short sentence or a bridge between the relevant pair that tightly connects the two terms, ideally by definition. Step 3. Use your bridge on the incomplete pair, choosing the answer that fits the bridge. Step 4. Work backwards when you need to. Now let's see how to apply the four steps. Step 1. Determine the relationship. Poodle is to dog as banana split is to A. Dessert, B. Greyhound, C. Parfait, D. Ice cream. That's a typical 1, 2, 3, 4 analogy. The first two words, that is the stem words, easily connect. Here's a bridge. A poodle is a type of dog. Or, if you want to get a little fancy, Poodles constitute a subclass of dogs. It's often a good idea to predict a logical answer. Banana split is a type of what? Dessert. Choose a dessert and that will fit perfectly. Now let's look at a 1 to 3, 2 to 4 analogy. Traitor is to introvert as loyal is to a ambiverted, b dependable, C. Gregarious, D. Shy. There doesn't appear to be any clear connection between traitors and introversion, so this is probably not a 1 2 analogy, but it's probably a 1 3 analogy, assuming that wordplay isn't involved. Note that a traitor is, by definition, not loyal. So now we need a contrasting term for introvert. An introvert is characteristically reserved. An introvert, then, isn't gregarious, in other words, a highly social person, a mixer. C. gregarious uh, is clearly the best answer. Let's look at another. Chapter is to A. Novel, B. Conductor, C. Musician, D. Sentence, as act is to play. A chapter and an act can be related as parts of large, larger works, but the connection isn't extremely tight. But act and play are definitionally connected. An act is a division of a play. Yes, people act in plays, but the word chapter is a noun, and in semantic or meaning-based analogies, the parts of speech will be parallel. Drawing our information, we can say an act is a division of a play, just as a chapter is a division of what? Of our choices, only novel works because a novel, unlike the other choices, is divided into chapters. Step 2. Build a bridge between the complete pair. A bridge, again, is a sentence linking one term to another once you've determined that the two terms are related. For example, if your analogy is you to ram, your bridge could be a female sheep is a you whereas a male sheep is a ram. Keys to building good bridges. Build a sentence that is clear and tight, preferably connecting the terms by definition. Look for properties something must or must not have. Keep the sentence short and to the point. Avoid qualifying phrases such as may or may not be, is sometimes, or could be. Okay, Milton and Paradise Lost. What is the uh, good relationship between these? How about this? Milton wrote the poem Paradise Lost. Now we have Cooper is to barrels. A Cooper makes and repairs barrels. Foal and horse. A foal is a baby or young horse. Sounder and pigs. A sounder is a group of pigs. Then when you're ready. Step 3. Choose the answer that fits the bridge. 
After you have determined which stem term goes with which and have made a bridge with the two complete stem words, you're ready to try out your bridge on the incomplete pair. Okay. Let us apply all of this information together. A. Clumsiness. B. Charisma. C. Grace. D. Erudition is to sincerity as ballerina is to hypocrite. The first thing you should notice is that the terms hypocrite and sincerity should leap out at you. A hypocrite must by definition lack sincerity. What quality is incompatible with the function of a ballerina? A ballerina to function well cannot be clumsy. The answer then is clumsiness, a clumsiness. Step 4. Work backwards when you need to. What happens if you can't build a bridge between the stem terms? Or let's say you don't know some of the stem terms, or you understand one half of the an analogy, but don't know how to complete it. Tips for working backwards. Well first, if you can't build a bridge, pay attention to the parts of speech of the stem words. Try different ways to build a bridge. Consider secondary meanings of words. For example, the word cow can function as a verb meaning to intimidate. The word low can function as a verb meaning to moo, that is making a sound associated with cows. Second, look for trap answer choices and eliminate them. Third, try the remaining choices to see whether one of them makes sense. Fourth, if you are stuck after all the suggestions, just guess. Pay attention to parts of speech. If an analogy is confusing, check out parts of speech in the question, that is, whether the stem terms are nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and so on. Typically, unless the analogy is non-semantic and deals with wordplay, and the vast majority aren't like that, parts of speech are consistent within an analogy. In other words, if the first term of one word pair is an adjective and the second term is a noun, you can expect that the same is true for the other word pair. Again, non-semantic analogies, of which you may get one or two, need not be grammatically parallel. For example, if you see uh, adjective is to a adjective, B adjective, C adjective, D adjective as noun is to noun, you can infer that the analogy is 1, 3, 2, 4. What's more, because it isn't always clear whether a word is being used as a noun, verb, or adjective, recognizing the parts of speech of the other terms in the analogy can help you figure out how the word is being used. Consider the following analogy. Table is to motion as A. Disperse, B. Repay, C. Defer, D. Incur is to payment. Question, is the word table being used as a noun or a verb? Answer, because the word payment is always uh, a noun, the word motion is usually a noun, and the words disperse, repay, defer, and incur are all verbs, we have an analogy in the following form. Verb is to noun as verb is to noun. Now we can solve the question. To table a motion is to postpone it, just as to defer a payment is to postpone it. Eliminate trap answer choices. You can use what you know about parts of speech to eliminate answer choices that are the wrong parts of speech. Gentle is to breeze as mild, waft, violent, deracinate is to squall. Well, first we can realize that gentle and breeze are essentially or definitionally connected because a breeze is by definition gentle. And so we have adjective is to noun and then we can predict as adjective is to noun. Now we can eliminate B waft and D deracinate because neither can function as adjectives. We need an adjective. We won't have three parts of speech in a, in a meaning based analogy. 
The answer is C, violent. Because a breeze is a gentle wind, just as a squall is a violent wind, often accompanied by rain or snow. Consider the order of difficulty. For most test takers, questions 1 through 40 will be the easiest. 41 to 80, more difficult, and 81 to 120, challenging. In other words, the test is graded in difficulty. To be sure, you may have specialized knowledge, and you may find a question near the end of the test easy, but most people will miss many more questions near the end of the test than at the beginning. You can use the graded difficulty to your advantage. Suppose you see the following analogy, which we're going to go through orally. It's the hundredth analogy, which means it's going to be an analogy that most test takers will miss. Cow is too intimidated as jade is to A, gem, B, mineral, C, animal, D, tired. Note that the answer choice animal was a distractor because of the word cow. Note also that because there are never one to four analogies, the word cow couldn't connect directly to a word in the fourth position. Answer C, animal, isn't promising because it doesn't seem connected to the word jade at all. We're left with D, tired. If you know that the word jade can mean to wear out by overwork or abuse, or to tire or dull through excess or repetition, you can say to jade is to make tired, leaving us with to cow is to make intimidated. So let's try to make the sentence a bridge with the words and the answer choices in the remaining stem term. Jade is a gem. Well, that's possible, though it seems too easy for an answer near the end of the test. What's more, we wouldn't say cow is an intimidated. So we need to reject A, gem, and we also need to reject B, mineral, for the same reason. We reason, then, that we are probably dealing with a one to two analogy. If, if we still can't connect the word cow with the word intimidate, as when people are cowed into silence, we can work backwards. The question is number 100 of 120 questions, and that means that most people will probably miss it. In such a question, an answer that appears to be obviously right to most test takers will probably be incorrect. The word jade is often used as a noun to describe a mineral used as a gemstone. The answer choice A, gem, and B, mineral, um, are a bit too inviting for an answer near the end of the test. What's more, you've been told to figure out whether you have a 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 analogy. The words cow and jade don't appear to be related in meaning, sound, or letters. To sum up, the analysis leads us to the conclusion that cow is too intimidated as jade is too tired, because to cow is to make intimidated just as to jade is to make tired.